Hi, I'm going to talk to you today a, a little overview of how we're going to approach this unit on uh, the five major world religions and maybe learn a little bit about some that aren't so major. And uh, because that's this is something very unique to humans. Now, does every, does every human um, have a religion? No, just like um, every human is not a musician or an artist or um, a dramatist right, or is a uh, Epicurean or Stoic from our, you know, most of us have some sort of philosophy. We just don't always know by name what it is, and that's part of our journey is, is uh, discovering that. But it is very uniquely human to have religion. Um, we don't have evidence of animals having religion or religious activity, <clears throat> um, only humans, and it goes back a long way. But we're just going to learn, uh, our goal here is not to decide or pass judgment on one, which one is right, which one is true, but to understand these different beliefs and traditions in a neutral way. So we're just trying to learn. Uh, that's what college is about, learn about things we don't already know. Uh, we may already know, you know what we believe, or you might be in a journey of trying to reflect on that and determine what you believe for yourself. Um, and maybe this will be helpful. But it will be helpful in that you'll be able to understand some of the what we call basic tenets of um, the faith of major world religions and kind of how they came about. So let's take a look at the chapter. It's a very simple um, one. And actually, have a lot of students say this is their favorite one. They learn something about themselves or their own religion or about others they did not know. And so there's a chapter. There is just um, three embedded videos, and then based on that, you take the quiz, okay? Quizzes on that chapter in those videos. Then there's a discussion board activity which takes it a step beyond. So, okay, here are the basics, but there's a little bit more. Let's dig in a little bit more. So let's take a closer look. So as we get to our Larson text, um, which is always a combination, right, of, of kind of your typical textbook with words and paragraphs, but then as these um, embedded uh, videos. And so this is the most important one because it talks about the five major world religions and you want to be jotting some things down. And one way to check on that is if you know these questions, uh, you know, as you go through and they're going to take these in the order of chronology based on what we, you know, historically we can kind of get a starting uh, date. Then there's some more, uh, goes into Taoism, which is not one of the five major ones, but it's one that maybe you've heard about, maybe didn't really know that much about. Um, but watch this one about yin and yang. Uh, this is all these are on the quiz, okay? And then there's some questions to help you kind of review um, about that. And then um, it does have some additional resources for you to explore. Um, than the one on the Buddha. So the, uh, the videos are the main thing of this. There's some other things here to help you with your understanding and distinction between the three. But that's really it for uh, the text and the videos. Okay, let's go back here. So you have a quiz. It'll probably say quiz for your unit. This is um, and on those videos. Then we get to the discussion. And this is where we want to take it a step beyond. And so there's some things you need to read here about it. And remember, I will want you to dig in a little bit more and try to find that what we call a more objective rather than subjective approach to the humanities. A subjective approach just only has the lens of what I like, what I believe, and it's all about us. A humanities study is to help us get past that. It's important to know ourselves. That's why we had the Myers-Briggs. And we will always be trying to kind of understand ourselves better through this, but it's really to have a better understanding of the community and outside the community and to the global world that we interact in and people who are not us, people that are different, okay? So um, remember, you can learn about something without you know, believing or accepting it or passing judgment. So we're trying to get into an objective way, more neutral, just intellectual learning. So there's um, there's a list here, and you would click on the list to get um, some more information, go a little bit 
more into depth into these right here. Some of them weren't in the video, so that might be, if you feel like you kind of already knew it was in that major video, then pick one of these that, um, you know, was not on there. If you're like, I want to know more about this one, I didn't know much about, then whatever. Just pick, excuse me, pick one of these, watch it a few times so that you have a good understanding, and then, uh, and maybe you want to take these notes as you're going through and watching them. So what you'll do for the assignment is name two facts about this world religion that are new to you. Include details, at least four sentences. So this has got to be not what we already all got uh, from that overview of five world religions, something more, more detailed. Then um, one belief or practice of that particular religion that you picked, uh, let's say it's... Um, Judaism or Sikhism or Islam, whatever it is, that you think is admirable and it's different. Remember, it's something that's not yours already, okay? So, nice example. If you're a Christian and you've chosen to learn more about Islam, you might say that, for number two, even though you aren't a Muslim yourself, you still admire Islam's emphasis on frequent prayer. Or if you're a Hindu, you might say you might you might uh, say you admire Christianity's belief that we should forgive our enemies. So just a couple sentences here. And then a hypothetical, thought-provoking question. What's one question that you would ask a member of that religion about their faith, their practices? And uh, something you, you know, genuinely um, would want to know that isn't just something you could Google to find out. So then, of course, um, Points in a discussion always include responses, okay, so replies, and if you look at your syllabus, it's got that. So even if it doesn't mention how many points the replies are, that is always a part of the discussion grade, otherwise we wouldn't make it a discussion. Um, and it is thoughtful interaction, which you can kind of help. Uh, the whole point of this is to deepen our understanding. Back at the beginning, I emphasized the four C's, and here's a good time to First one is critical thinking, and critical thinking is under the objective, is not judgment uh, subjectively. Critical thinking is analytical, it's thinking about things objectively, um, how things are different, how things are alike. Uh, you know, it's, it's more in that objective way, okay, critically thinking about it, like, oh, um, and comparing. Then collaboration and communication. When we discuss, we do communicate, but our interaction is a way that we collaboratively think even more deeply about uh, the topic that we are discussing. So if you only uh, drop your answer in and leave, you've done half of the communication, but you certainly haven't done the collaboration of interacting with other people's uh, posts and responding to them or responding to people's questions they have for you. Um, I noticed in a recent uh, discussion that there were students asking questions and then they didn't get a response. Um, and then what was the last one? Creative. This, is, this one isn't heavy on, on creativity, um, except that you do have to create the question. But we are always trying to get as many of those four C's into our uh, assignments there. Okay, I hope from there you know exactly what to do. I look forward to uh, seeing your what you've learned um, in this study.